maybe. Okay. Uh, so uh, I thank you, Tiziano and Alfio, for, for, for inviting me, and probably Milan and Andrej Argent for the presentation, because uh, we met uh, in these in this communities online. And uh, mostly, uh, I think I was invited because I have been working with Fortran for, for a long time in my main packages. And I started work with Julia and people developing in Andridge, in particular developing uh, L Fortran is, is, is doing a, a beautiful job in making Fortran easier to develop in this more interactive way. So uh, I will uh, talk a, bit, a little bit how Julia fits into what I was doing uh, in my field, which is essentially particle simulations. So maybe some things that, that we can see from the, Julia, from the Julia ecosystem can be ported to, to Fortran. Actually, uh, it was a nice experience to me start to participate in these uh, online communities because both in the in the Julia forums and in the Fortran forums, I learned a lot about programming in general. And I learned also that fraud modern Fortran already uh, does many things that we, we see in, in other modern languages. For example, these, the, these packages for dealing with units, they are now uh, being ported to Fortran and that's very interesting by itself. And uh, and now they mentioned that we can, you, you can pass uh, essentially closures to Fortran routines. And this is also an important feature of this language. So anyway, I would speak a little bit about uh, my experience with Julia and comparing a little bit the codes that we would write in Fortran and in Julia in the, in the field. And uh, my, my overall impression that that's, it's very easy to port one thing to the other. And, and learning these two languages for scientific programming is it's, it's very nice. So uh, I will speak a little bit about particle simulations in Julia and I just a brief overview of what, what are the elements of a particle simulation and then explain how, how particularly Julia generics allow, allow uh, implementing some, some interesting analysis over the simulations and, and things. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to take much time with this, but wh what I'm going to do is start to, this is, uh, I started building a structure with a 2D vector essentially, which is a structure that contains uh, uh, an X and a Y coordinates. And not going to detail here, but this is a function that generates a random a point of this, of this type. So it generates a random 2D vector. So, uh, the the whole pack the whole structure of the code I'm showing is based on this on on working on a vector of two points of uh, a vector of two coordinates uh, which we start with by defining this to to the vector. So uh, I'm having some problems here. So. Uh, uh, the first thing we are going to do is to define one first energy function, which is simply uh, a function that increases quadratically if the E1 point approaches each other up to a cutoff distance C. And then the function is zero after this cutoff distance. So, so we, we are going to implement a simple energy function, which is, uh, I'm having some problems here with this. Okay, so the function is the, the energy function which will be applied to this particle simulation is an agent that, in, that increases quadratically, uh, quadratically when the distance is smaller than five. And so the force is, the force is linear up to five and then zero uh, if the distance is greater than five for this pair of particles. Uh, so, okay, then we, we can define this first function. I, I only want to, to remark that the, the syntax is very simple. So for example, here, the first function is very similar to something we, one would write in Fortran. I will show you in a comparison of the two languages. So the, the, the syntax is very neat in that sense. And the, the syntax for the first function is also uh, very simple. Uh, and then, okay, we can write uh, a general force function that uh, we, we pass, for example, this is important. Uh, we are passing a function to this forces function. And, and this, this argument of this forces function is a function which computes the, 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 the force for a one pair of particles. So this is one thing that was mentioned in the previous talk that we can pass functions for uh, as closures, as, as we are going to say. 
uh, for for linear functions in Julia, so we can we can make the code generic for the type of function that we are providing for to the code. So okay, uh, we create some rubber points here in two dimensions, and we can uh, call, for example, this the the function that computes the forces uh, in our simulation. And one of the arguments of this function will be what we call a closure, which receives. Uh, which which defines that the function which internally in the forces uh, function is expecting four arguments, which are the indexes of the two particles and the coordinates of the two particles, will be mapped into our external pair function, which actually only requires the, the, the two coordinates and the cutoff of the energy function. So we are going to pass to the to the to, to the forces function this function which is a closure that closes over the cutoff uh, the cutoff argument and and eliminates the need of some of the arguments of the inner that the inner function of is expecting to receive so this is very practical because afterwards we will be defining new new function force new new forces functions and then we can re simply replace the way we are calling the the external function to to, to, to change, which is the kind of function that we want, we want to evaluate. Uh, here, uh, the, 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 argo the, the algorithm that uh, I will be showing here for performing the particle simulation is very simple. So we compute the force at, at one step, uh, given the coordinates of the particles, we are computing the force at the, that given step of uh, instant of time. Then we are going to propagate the trajectory with the most simple algorithm, which means that the position at a, a posterior time step is the position at one step times the loss plus the velocity times the, the time step and acceleration times time step square over two. And we propagate the velocities with the uniformly uh, accelerated equations that we learned in high school. So it's a very simple code, a very simple algorithm. Uh, and the code uh, looks uh, much, pretty much the same as 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 the as the algorithm that was presented, except that uh, uh, I will call attention here that when the the arguments of the function uh, are vectors of a general type t, because uh, uh, which t is a parametric type which is not defined in this function, so we are going to use this flexibility later to 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 you to. To, to do some interesting things in the simulation. Uh, uh, the function also received the forces function, which will compute, which is the function that compute the forces between the particles, which is called internally with this syntax. And then, okay, acceleration is force uh, 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 divided by mass and we propagate the positions, propagate the velocities, and we save the time steps uh, uh, every, uh, with, some, with some frequency defined in the, as, by the arguments. Uh, so uh, we can run the simulation now. Uh, this is just to, to show some pretty things. So we, we, our simulation now just explodes because we have just defined a, a repulsive potential where, or that uh, that work that uh, 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 acts acts on the particles at short distances, and the initial velocities were random, so our particles explode. Uh, but anyway, uh, to do things a little bit more interesting, uh, I'm going to use periodic modern conditions in this in this setup. And to do so, uh, the interesting thing here is that I'm going to compare what what would be an implementation fortune of the same function, which of course is very similar to this. I, I, I like to point out the similarity of the syntax, the syntaxes of the languages because that makes it very easy to to work on both languages very creatively. So. Uh, we are going to, to use periodic modern conditions, meaning that now our particles are constrained in a, in a square of side 100. And then uh, our simulation, when the particles uh, live on one side of the of the, our box, they go into the other side of the box and they interact periodically in an infinite system. So here, okay, uh, this is a, 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 the, code, uh, the code I have shown is able to run this simulation. And okay, we have the particles moving and so on. So this is this is now this now looks like 
one one simulation that actually means something in terms of of uh, dense system of of some sort. Uh, okay, we can benchmark this 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 code by running uh, by running one of the tools of benchmarking that are available. Uh, and okay, this code takes uh, about 200 milliseconds to run the number of steps of the simulation that I run there. Uh, what what I want to call attention here is that uh, we can compare uh, the the efficiency of this code of of the with the efficiency of a of a typical compiled language like Fortran, and I have this comparison here, and the codes perform pretty much this in, in the same. Uh, Julia is it's just in time compiled, so if we write it properly properly we shouldn't expect a, expect a, a great difference between performance of both codes but i like to to compare the the syntax of the julia code with the syntax of the fortran code here so we see for example this is the rec function which here i use the elemental uh, property of fortran so we can use it in scalars and vectors as well the Julia function, the Julia function looks like this, and except for the for the type declarations, the, the syntax is pretty much identical. Yeah, we can translate one quote uh, one quote on the other in, in, in half an hour. Actually, uh, this is a good thing. I, I must say, uh, it, it was it was a nice experience experience uh, doing this translation because I have I've been working with Julia for the past uh, one and a half year more or less. And I was a little bit out of shape in my Fortran, and also I was very outdated in what I knew about the Julia Fortran, Julia syntax. But it's very nice Fortran. It's great because we can just pick the code, translate it into Fortran, and it just performs well out of the box. This is a great thing about Fortran. We, it's it's hard to get it wrong with Fortran in terms of in terms of of performance. So. So the, it was a nice experience for me also for to 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 learn um, a little bit more about modern for uh, for trans syntax and and you, we can see that using uh, particularly again the, we using using modern for trans six syntax with vectorized operations uh, what what we have is 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 vectorized code which pretty much pretty much is very very similar to 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 the to the to the to the syntax of the Julia code. I must mention also that uh, all this uh, I forgot to say that in the beginning that all the the material is available at this page on the top, so you can see it more carefully later. So what what's nice about uh, Julia, and I think Fortran has some tools on that side, but uh, uh, I think there are interesting things that we can do with Julia at least uh, with the knowledge I have about them. I'm not a uh, very very expert in either in Julia or in Fortran, so I apologize if I say something wrong here. But for example, in this case, our code was originally our force, uh, uh, our force function, and our molecular dynamics function were all uh, generic in terms of the type of variables they receive. So uh, to to run a simulation in three dimensions, we only need to define now a three dimensional type of point with three coordinates and just gen by generate providing to the inner functions to the function our md function uh, velocities and 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 positions which are now three dimensional uh, we have a three dimensional running simulation we don't have to change anything in the in the original codes of the forces of the simulations and so on. uh there are more something some things that are more interesting that are related also to the, to unit propagation. For example, we can define a, a, a type of variable which is which is for example I, I have called it here my measurement, and this type of variable contains the coordinate of the particle and an uncertainty in the same structure. Uh, then okay, I can initialize one of these particles, and now it contains the the, the value and the uncertainty. And if I define in this function in, in my code which is the arithmetics for this type of of variable, uh, for instance, uh, the arithmetics arithmetics consists in, for example, subtracting two 
of these variables consists of subtracting the values but summing the uncertainties. And for again, the other operations are, are always propagating the uncertainties uh, linearly according to the first derivative of the of the of, of the of the the, the, uh, the operation you are performing relative to the variable, to the value of the variable. So now uh, we can initialize. For, I have initialized here a variable, uh, a measurement that contains an uncertainty. And now, after defining this, these arithmetics on, on this variable, we can just compute uh, arithmetics automatically propagating the, the, the uncertainties. Uh, we can create a vector of dimension two without changing the original, the original, the original definition of vectors. Simply by providing to this to to our vector d structure a variable of type my measurement. So now I have a vector of measurements, and I can perform uh, the operations on on this on these uh, tuples of of, of of variables and propagate the uncertainties on each of the coordinates. Uh, there is a package called measurements that that does this define this type of measurement for more general arithmetic operations. And then we can use this package in which we can define uh, uh, points with uncertainties. And just by, by providing to the functions uh, uh, points, which are now the same force functions as I defined it before, the same molecular dynamic code that I defined it before, uh, now I, I feed these these functions, these molecular this, this simulation function, with a, a, a vector of points with uncertainties. Now I can propagate the uncertainties in in a trajectory that I'm running the simulation. So now we have uh, the simulation looks uh, pretty much the same, but now I have uh, the, the uncertainty in in the the x coordinate for each particle propagating in the trajectory. Uh, automatically by changing the type of variable when feeding to the code. Uh, we can do this with uh, planetary motions, um, I, but okay, this was more interesting, but this is the same thing, but now I'm running a simulation with uncertainties for planets. So we can see here, I've been starting my simulation and you can see the, how the uncertainty in the position propagates for each planet in the, in the simulation. Uh, but I and and interesting, interestingly, uh, one thing that in, we, you you can see if, if we see this trajectory, this is the Earth, and if you can follow the the days here, when it comes to two years, you will see that the Earth does, doesn't reach the initial position that was what about here. So the the, tra the trajectory is such that the Earth didn't complete two two Earth two revolutions around the Sun in two years. So uh, there is a problem with our parameters in our simulations in, that are causing the, the period of the Earth to be short. So I want to fix that. So how do I can I can fix that uh, by the, creating uh, a function that computes which is the error in the trajectory uh, uh, given the initial point of the Earth. So I have defined a function here which is the Earth orbit which receives as a parameter the initial position of the Earth and returns a tra the trajectory after here two years of revolution around the Earth. I have taken the care, uh, in, uh, I have taken uh, 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 the care of making all the variables generic in terms that I can pass any kind of variable to this function. So this is a parametric type of variable. And by doing that, I can define an error function, which is the error in the orbit, so given an initial position of the Earth, my function will, will, will perform two cycles of the, of the, of the trajectory of the, the Earth around the sun and compute how far from the initial position from, the, from, from com two complete revolutions the, the, the Earth has, has finally arrived. So is there an error in the period of the orbit that's, that's occurred? So there is an error, my, my trajectory is not correct, However, by, by taking care of, of making all the code uh, gen of, use of generic in terms of the type of variable that it, it is accepting, uh, you can, we can automatically differentiate the complete code 
relative to the initial position of the Earth. The, the complete simulation is now differentiable. Uh, and then we can use, for example, here that I have implemented a very simple gradient descent uh, 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 algorithm. And we can now use an automatic differentiation package to compute the derivative of the final position of the Earth after two revolutions as a function of the initial position of the Earth. And I can use a gradient-based algorithm here to, to optimize the initial position of the Earth uh, to, to correct the fact that the, the trajectory is not complete in two periods in, in, in the complete revolution. So here now, uh, the, the, blue, the, the darker blue spot is, is the corrected trajectory and the lighter blue spot is the, the initial trajectory. We see that now after two revolutions, the, the light spot doesn't complete the two, the two cycles around the sun while the blue spot was fixed. The, the initial position of the blue spot was fixed such that the trajectory is corrected now. What I'm developing in Julia, uh, what I have been developing is this package cell list map, which is a package that implements a, a cell list approach for computing short ranged interactions uh, in particle simulations. So in, in particle simulations, the, na the naive algorithm, which consists of checking all the pairs of particles uh, uh, consists in evaluating all distance between pairs of particles. And then this, is a, this has a cost of the square of, uh, it's proportional to the square of the number of particles. So uh, the cell lists uh, is a, I'm, I'm running that. Cell lists is a, it's a methodology that, um, uh, a strategy that we can partition the space in regions and then if we classify each particle to one region of the space, and then we know that we can compute the interactions only with the particles which are vicinal to the, to the, to the region in which each particle is classified. So we don't need to run over our pair of particles, but only around the pair of, uh, on the pair of particles that are within the, the neighboring cells of, the, of, the part, of, of, of each box. So this drastically accelerates the, 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 the simulation, the, the computing of the, of, the, of the forces, for example. Here, for example, with the naive algorithm, in this case, uh, with 1,000 particles, this, this takes 10 seconds. And, uh, and with the cell list approach, uh, I, can, I don't have, uh, it takes half a second. So, okay, so it accelerates a, a lot the, the computation of the forces. Uh, what, what the, the interesting thing here is that, okay, this can be used to actually run simulation. So this is the same thing, the simulation running using the cell list approach. So this, is, this becomes fast. And, and to, to give a final example, we can compute uh, uh, an energy, which is a Leonard John energy to simulate actually something that looks like a, uh, a physical system like a neon, a ne liquid neon at a a superfluid neon at room temperature. This is what I'm simulating here. And then, okay, I, we can now compute the energy for for an actual energy Jones potential, which is the typical potential used in molecular dynamic simulations. And okay, this is the function that computes the Leonard Jones potential, which is uh, looks essentially uh, the same thing as the equation. And we are using here the, the cell list package, the cell list map pa pa package that I developed for computing these interactions quickly. I don't have to go into detail, but okay, this is the, the, the profile of the Lenargent function, which explodes for, for short distances. This makes it very uh, unstable numerically. So we, we have to start with from configurations that do not have overlapping particles. Otherwise, everything is unstable numerically. Uh, and the way of the way to do that is try to, for example, if we try to minimize the energy of a random generated uh, set of coordinates, uh, it's very hard to minimize this energy because the the this this is a very high energy after minimization because uh, the the numerically this 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 Leonard Jones potential is not very friendly. Uh, and also, it takes quite a lot of time. Uh, uh, Leon, Mo, which is the Leon, yeah. uh, just uh, in, in view of time. Um, how yeah, much yeah. time do you need? 
uh, I think I can finish in one, two minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. So just to finalize. You know, so, uh, the, so, so what PACMO, which is a package in Fortran that I have developed, which is my most uh, relevant package, uh, what PACMO does is to, is to replace this, this uh, energy function by that short range and interaction function that uh, we have mentioned before, which, is, which only avoids the overlap between atoms and mu it's much more uh, uh, friendly from a numerical point of view. So that packing function can be so, can, does essentially this. This is a, a, a configuration of the atoms, which is random. And then after packing the atoms, by, after minimizing the, the energy of that short range of potential, we obtain uh, uh, an initial configuration of, of for, the, for the system, which, is, which does not have overlaps anymore. So this is now, now can be used to start a safely a molecular dynamic simulation. Solving this packing problem is much faster than solving the and minimizing the energy problem. So it, instead of taking 70 seconds, 60, 67 seconds in this toy example, it takes, it, it takes two seconds to solve this problem. So this solves the problem of generating initial configuration for molecular dynamic simulation. And just to finish, how fast is this implementation of, of cells, cell lists in, in, in that, that I have been developing? To, to, uh, just to illustrate, I have performed a simulation of, I mentioned uh, a supercritical neon, uh, neon here at a density that's, a, that's equivalent to the atomic density of water. So this is representative of the density of particles in a typical molecular dynamic simulation. Okay, this simulation here, toy simulation takes 10 seconds, but what I want to mention is that if I compare this simulation with the implementation of NAMD, and AMD is a very important package in the field of molecular dynamic simulation. So if I try to, with NAMD to compute the same kind of simulation that I'm performing here with cell list map, we see that we have similar performances. This is to mention that it is possible to write performance code uh, uh, in Julia and, 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 and I think with, with some interesting characteristics associated with the generic types and so on. So I have developed this package and I use it here and then this package derived into a, a complex mixture package which in my field serves to study the structure of complex solutions of molecules from molecular dynamic simulations. So, uh, I finish here. I sorry for passing a little bit of time. I thank Andre and everybody for the for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, thank you. Um, there's quite some discussion in the chats um, okay. or Slack. Um, <coughs> could you comment? Uh, well, that was uh, my my uh, question on um, okay. the the stability of Julia as the language. Uh, I mean, uh, Julia is uh, it's changing rapidly in the sense of adding new features. So at every, for example, this, pack, this package of mine is compatible with the version 1.5 of Julia, which is, I don't know, one year old, maybe. Uh, so we, you, can, you can run it with the with version 1.3, but, but they are, but these these are features that have been added which are not breaking. So a package that was my package which works with 1.6 works with 1.7 and it's working with all versions uh, uh, up up to version 2.0, which is not really in in uh, in a very short term uh, perspective. So. Uh, it's it's a language that's being very rapidly developing <laughs> developed now. I, I but it, they are committed with with making it non-breaking uh, for a reasonable foreseeable future at least. I think that's the impression that I have. Uh, 